This is the final Piers Morgan Live. After three years, two months, 11 days and over 1,000 shows, I'm departing to spend more time with my cricket bat. I'd like to thank my amazing team, led with great skill and tireless enthusiasm by my friend and executive producer, Jonathan Wald, and John Ferreter, my irrepressible manager, who landed me this fascinating, unpredictable, challenging, but hugely enjoyable job. We won some, we lost some, but we gave it everything we had and I've loved every minute. Well, almost every minute. I'd also like to thank you all for watching, even those who implacably disagree with me or just found my funny accent annoying. Regular viewers will know that the issue of gun control has been a consistent and often very controversial part of this show. And I want to say something more about that before I buy out. I've lived and worked in America for much of the past decade. It's a magnificent country, a land of true opportunity that affords anyone, even British chancers like me, the opportunity to live the American dream. The vast majority of Americans I've met are decent, hard-working, thoroughly dependable people. As my brother, a British Army colonel, says, you'd always want an American next to you in a trench when the going gets tough. But that's where I think guns belong, on a military battlefield, in the hands of highly trained men and women fighting for democracy and freedom, not in the hands of civilians. The scourge of gun violence is a disease that now infects every aspect of American life. Each day, on average, 35 people in this country are murdered with guns, another 50 kill themselves with guns, and 200 more are shot but survive. That's 100,000 people a year hit by gunfire in America. Now, I assume that after 70 people were shot in a movie theater, and then just a few months later, 21st graders were murdered with an assault rifle in an elementary school. The absurd gun laws in this country would change, but nothing has happened. The gun lobby in America, led by the NRA, has bullied this nation's politicians into cowardly supine silence, even when 20 young children are blown away in their classrooms. This is a shameful situation that frankly has made me very angry. So angry, in fact, that some people have criticised me for being too loud, opinionated, even rude when I've debated the issue of guns. But I make no apologies for that. As Sir Winston Churchill said, if you have an important point to make, don't try and be subtle or clever. Use a pile driver. Hit the point once then come back and hit it again, then hit it a third time. A tremendous whack. My point is simple. More guns doesn't mean less crime, as the NRA repeatedly tries to tell you. It means more gun violence, more death, and more profits for the gun manufacturers. And to those who claim my gun control campaigning has been anti-American, well, the reverse is true. I'm so pro-American, I want more of you to stay alive. But I've made my point. I've given it a tremendous whack. Now it's down to you. It is your country. These are your gun laws. And the sense of slaughter will only end when enough Americans stand together and cry, enough. I look forward to that day. I also look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you, and God bless America. Oh, and while I'm at it, God bless Great Britain too. Good night.